10 weird rules that the royal family has to follow. It is mandatory to wear hats. According to the royal protocol, women must wear hats on most royal occasions, a tradition that began back in the 1950s. However, it is unofficially understood that hats can be abandoned for more casual functions. According to etiquette experts, it was deemed impolite for royal and upper-class ladies to flaunt their hair in public during the time. The current generation of royals no longer wears hats when attending unofficial events, but Queen Elizabeth never forgot to wear one since she was rarely seen in public without a colorful sun hat to complement her skirt suits. The Bridal Bouquet Royal brides are expected to include a sprig of myrtle in the bridal bouquets they carry down the aisle as a part of the wedding tradition. This custom originated during the reign of Queen Victoria when Princess Victoria carried it in 1858, together with the flowers that stand for love, luck, and wealth. Since then, every royal bride, including Princess Diana, Queen Elizabeth II, and Meghan Markle, has carried the plant on her wedding day. A time for the tiara. Royal women are typically expected to attend formal occasions like state dinners and black tie affairs after 5 p.m. while donning their diamond encrusted tiaras. The bride may also don the tiara on the wedding day early in the day because royal weddings typically begin at 11 a.m. During state visits or ceremonial banquets hosted at Buckingham Palace in recent years, Kate has been spotted donning a tiara from the Queen's collection. They cannot travel together. Two royals who are direct heirs to the throne are not permitted to travel together without the Queen's special consent in order to preserve royal lineage. So that Prince William and his three children might spend more time together, Queen Elizabeth II had been allowing them to travel together. But once he reaches the age of 12, Prince George who is presently eight, will have to start traveling without his father. No seafood outside home. Royals avoid eating seafood outside of their houses or while going overseas to maintain their health. This is also to avoid allergic responses or potential food poisoning from poorly prepared or raw shellfish like as prawns, oysters, crab, lobster, scallops and crayfish. Once the monarch's meal is done, so is everyone else's. Everyone must simply stop eating when the queen or king finishes their final bite. Queen Victoria, who had reigned from 1837 to 1901, is where this all began. In other words, even if the guests hadn't finished their meals, the protocol at the time required that all of the visitors' plates be removed for the next course after the queen or king had done. Chin up. Royal women are expected to keep their chins parallel to the floor at all times, especially while entering rooms or walking downstairs, other than the first two and last two steps, according to etiquette experts. In addition to ensuring appropriate posture, this chin parallel to the floor and square of the shoulders also helps to show that real ladies are interested in and aware of their surroundings. When it comes to monarchy, Having a chin that is excessively high or low might convey an air of arrogance or lack of confidence. Although it can be risky to descend stairs in this position, male royals frequently go one or two steps ahead of their female counterparts to provide assistance in case she trips. Special army courses are mandatory. Both Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle underwent two-day special British Army courses at the British Army's SAS headquarters as part of their training to join the royal family. Preparing them for the possibility of a personal security crisis or hostage situation. Did you know that during the training Meghan would have been the victim of a false kidnapping and would have been transported somewhere else before being rescued by police using fictitious weapons? She learned how to establish a rapport with the adversary and learned how to operate a vehicle while being pursued during the simulation. A Roman Catholic royal cannot become a monarch. For ages, there has been a delicate relationship between the monarchy and Catholicism. Royal family members were forbidden from getting married to Roman Catholics if they intended to be king or queen for more than 300 years, beginning in 1701. A number of marriages were invalidated as a result of this rule, 
including King George IV's unrecognized union with the Catholic Maria Fitzherbert. The ability for royals to wed Catholics, if they so desired, was ultimately granted by a statute passed in 2013 that became effective in 2015. However, all they can do is get married. Holding hands. Since the passing of the Queen, the UK's longest training monarch, the royal family has made a number of public appearances to meet mourners and greet well-wishers. At Windsor and Sandringham, the crowds were met by the Queen's grandchildren and their wives, and most people noticed a difference in their body language. While Kate and William kept their distance and strolled apart as they welcomed the crowds, Harry and Meghan went hand in hand and were spotted leaning on one another for support. Don't worry, there is nothing serious going on between them, but they have acted professionally and in accordance with royal protocol, which forbids the future king and queen consort from making public shows of adoration or affection.